Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, welcome in. Winning Cures Everything, I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. We got a new table. I don't know if you can tell. A new setup, a new design. Yeah, we, uh, we're we a lot more comfortable this way, I think. I feel a little more exposed, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> we're a little closer than we were before. We're not exposing ourselves. Let's get that right. It's not that kind of show. It you ain't that kind of show. It charges extra. <laughs> this is the NFL Week 15 previews. College football, for the most part, is done. Uh, if you want to listen, of course, we will talk Army-Navy on another episode so go over and check that out. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what games you like this week, which ones you don't like, which ones we should have talked about but we didn't, etc. We want to hear your opinion on all of it. So hit us up. Leave a comment. And again, make sure you subscribe and like. If you're listening on the podcast, hit subscribe. Leave us a nice review. We would definitely appreciate that. Uh, check out winningcureseverything.com, all of our picks. Previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms, etc., can be found over there. Very simple stuff. Like us, follow us, everything else, Facebook, Twitter, etc., whatever. So a little bit about Apple Podcasts, by the way. So I used to leave reviews way back in the day for podcasts all the time, and it was kind of a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. You, you couldn't do it from the phone very well at all. You had to go online. Apple completely did away with their online thing. Now you only do it from the app on your phone, and it's really easy. I mean, yeah. it really is. Just, just hit, there, that, hit that five star. Fi- scroll down, find reviews, hit reviews. Just click five stars. You can say a few words if you want. We'd appreciate it. And we'll read it on the show. No, we just we just really – it does help us a whole lot, and, and it shows us that, that we're doing something right. You got that right. You got that right. We're not doing right. It, give us five stars and then give us some critiques. There you go. Make it simple. Make it simple. <laughs> we uh, we got a couple of sponsors, of course. As always, the show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books. We vouch for all of them. We've been to all of them. They are fantastic. But along with the sports books, they got some other amazing things as well. Steakhouses, golf courses. I mean, whatever you want to do down there. They got some awesome shows that come through, comedians and bands and whatnot all the time. And it's Christmas time. There's a bunch of stuff going on down there. Go check it out for yourself. Tunicatravel.com. That is the place to get the information on everything that's happening. We will tell you it is a good time, uh, especially around football season, around fight season, you know, which is basically yeah. year-round anyway. Yeah. Uh, but there's a big McGregor fight coming up in January, which I hadn't talked to you about, but... We've we, talked about it. We're uh, going to be okay. there. Okay. We, we're, we're going down for January 18th. Rooms. That'll, be my, uh, that'll be my birthday gift. That'll be my birthday thing. So getting old on us. You got that right. You got that right. The big three seven. Good gracious. So uh the other the other sponsor, smackapparel.com. Go check them out. Novelty shirts, awesome just regular logo shirts, etc. For your favorite pro and college teams. It is the Christmas season after all. You got to get some shopping done. Easiest way to do it, do it online. It's simple. Use promo code WIN. That's W I N. You get 20% off your order. No matter how big the order is, you will get 20% off of it. And if the order is over $40, they're going to ship it to you for free. So go check them out. Smackapparel.com. They got cool LSU, Alabama, uh, Cowboys, Patriots, you know, whatever. Whatever your favorite team is, they got it. Go check it out. Smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN and get 20% off of the order. Let's fire into this bad boy. NFL Week 15. Let's talk about the big games. Okay. Game number one. Biggest game of the weekend. What do you got? I put Rams Cowboys at one, but we can push that down if you want. That's up to you. I think this I is I don't the, think that's the biggest game of the weekend, but I I think it it It's definitely a big game. I think nationally it is the biggest game of the weekend. It has the most to do with the playoffs, etc. Right? Because the Cowboys and the Eagles are tied right now in the NFC East. Okay. So the Cowboys need to win this game. Okay. The Rams are basically out of it, but they've, I mean, I'm not going to say they're out of it, but they need to win this game to be able to get a playoff or a a wild card spot, right? I mean, even if they went out, they need help. What are the standings? Hold on. I'm pulling them up. 
I'm pulling them up. And the Cowboys can lose this game. This the reason why I didn't think so is because the Cowboys can lose this game as long as they beat Philly at the end of the year. They're gonna they're gonna win the spot. There's there's still a lot to be determined. Yes. So um, the reason the team the game that I thought should be the biggest game of the weekend is Bears Packers. A I think it's a rivalry game, a big game. Bears are fighting for a wild card spot. They need a little bit of help, and they definitely got to keep winning. The Packers are trying to hold on with dear life for their divisional um, lead. So, so here's the deal: the Rams are eight and five right now. The Vikings are nine and four, and Seattle is ten and three. So, what we have, we've got. Let's see: the 49ers at eleven and two, the Packers at ten and three. New Orleans is 10 and 3. And then you've got Seattle 10 and 3, Minnesota 9 and 4, Rams 8 and 5, Chicago 7 and 6, and then Dallas is 6 and 7. So with with Chicago being 7 and 6 and the Rams being 8 and 5, the Rams have the lead in the wild card there. True. But they still need either Seattle or Minnesota to fall off. Yeah, they they both would need help. Who would win that tiebreaker between Minnesota and, and the Rams? I think Minnesota has played them already. Let's see if they've played. I don't. The I don't think they. I don't think they played this year. Hang on, they might have. They might not have. I don't know. Got the schedule. No, they played the. I would say I know they've played in L.A. They are playing in L.A. this week. That's where I got that from. So no, they haven't played. I wouldn't. I mean, the tiebreaker would be conference record, and then the tiebreaker after that would be. Um, I don't know what the tiebreaker would be after that. I mean that's it. so. Conference. If nothing else, you you need to win just to be able to get into a tiebreaker scenario. Correct. So, yeah, I mean that's it, I I think let's go on and talk about that one. Let's talk about Rams Cowboys. That's fine. Rams have looked really good here lately. Um, and by lately I do mean last week, last week, okay, and the week before because they they hammered the Cardinals the week before that. Yeah, but that's a bad team. Agreed. Um, but any win is a good win after you go out and look the way you did. Okay. At home against uh, against the Ravens. Ag- agreed. Right? Agreed. Um, but they have won three out of four here. Like, they beat the uh, the Bears the week before that. And the Cowboys just have fallen off of a cliff. Correct. Like, just, uh, can you explain what is happening with Dallas here? Is it just because they're playing good competition right now? Well, I, what I think they're the good, bad team. They lose to the bad. Well, I say that, but then they lost last week to a bad team. Um I mean, they lost on the road, but Chicago is in the playoff hunt. So, I mean, I guess like they are bad, they, but they, they, they gave up. They have not. Points. They have not beat a good team all year. No, they, their wins. When you go down their schedule. They don't have a win against a good team all year. They beat the Giants. They beat the Redskins. They beat the Dolphins. They beat. Let's see, the Eagles. Then they beat the Giants again. Then they beat Detroit, and. They have not won since they beat Detroit the week before Thanksgiving. So, but their losses are Chicago, uh, Buffalo, New England, Minnesota. Uh, let's see, the Jets. That's not good. The Packers, the Saints. That's it. Yeah, I mean, it's so so they're losing to good teams, really good teams, aside from Chicago and the Jets. Well, that's um, it. Like they they're losing. They're losing. Really they, needed to beat the Jets. They and, realistically and the could lose any game. But they've proven they cannot beat a good team. So are the Rams a good team? I think they're good. I don't think they're great, but I do think they're good. Are they are they good enough to beat Dallas on the road? Yes. They're better than the Bears. Okay. Do you let's go on and make our picks then? All right. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys. Okay. I think they need this one. Well, they way more than the than the Rams. See, we disagree there because and I they think, don't. I think that the Rams are – uh, you're right. If they okay. lose this game, for, they still, for, they're not making a wild card anyway. For they emotional, for emotional uh, uh, well-being, they need this game. Okay. And it just seems crazy to me. Like, it, so many people are betting the Rams. Like, this line opened up at four. True. That's correct. As in the Cowboys favored by four. Okay. And now the Rams are favored by one. It has gone through the zero and come back around. I'm like, there's I, something I, okay. that's going on here. I do think that there's just an insane amount of overreaction on the Rams beating. Uh, 
They beat. I mean, they beat Seattle. Seattle, that was but it. like yeah, my, bra- my brain went completely blank from yesterday. But they beat Seattle on, you know, Sunday night football. Like they always play tight with Seattle. Like I don't, I don't know what any of it means. You're right. No, listen, the house is going to have Dallas big, which is but the house is going to have the Rams big. Well, they're going to. Oh, the house. It's in the house. Sorry, house I, needs Dallas. The big. public is going to have Rams. the Rams. House is yeah. going to have Dallas big. You're probably right. That's probably the right side to be on. You taking? God, man, I don't want to put money on this damn Cowboys team. Well, you're not putting money. This is just our picks for the preview. Whatever. I, I, I'm <laughs> I'm making a pick here, and you've got Sean McVay and Jason Garrett on each sideline. You are telling me I got to take the ginger? Is you don't Sean have McVay to do anything. Ginger? Is he is that Sarah blonde or red? No, Sean is. He's red. He's so handsome, both. He is a handsome ginger. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I will agree with that. I, I do not think Jason Garrett is. He's your standard ginger. <laughs> I'm, I'm deflecting here because I don't really want to make a pick. I'm, I'm going to pick the Rams. I'm going to pick the Rams because I can't. I just can't see how the Cowboys can do this. Now that that you're right, it wouldn't make much sense. It wouldn't They're make much not, sense. Here's the problem: they don't have injuries, and and talent wise, they can play tit for tat with the Rams. There's, yeah. there's absolutely no reason they should not be able to hang in this game or win this game. There's none, except for the fact that they are struggling to beat mediocre teams in the league. Yeah. And I don't know what to do with that information. I, I don't either. I don't either. You're, you're, on the, you're on the safe side that if I had to really make a wager and put money in it and somebody was like, hey, we're, we're at Tunica, we're at the ticket, you got to bet this game. Put, pick pick one. I'm gonna err on the side of going with the house, and it just it just be one of those things where I mean I've lost bets before. Yeah, hell if I lose it, I lose it. But I I just can't emotionally take Jason Garrett, knowing that Jason I think Jason Garrett is dead man walking. Oh, a hundred percent. And the reports are the only reason he hasn't been fired now is, and this is from Troy Aikman, like a a guy that's still plugged in this team, and B. A guy that carries the water for the Cowboys more than any announcer we've ever heard in our life. And he Jerry doesn't think there's anybody else on the coaching staff that he could even call the interim that would improve things. And so why make a change? That's insane. That's insane, but I don't know that it's wrong. Like it, it wouldn't be like Kellen Moore. It wouldn't be Oh hell no. Hell no. That offense looked amazing early on. And I think after three weeks, they played three bad teams. And then everybody's like, yeah, I got that figured out. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah, we know exactly what they're going to do and when they're going to do it and how they're going to do it, and we're going to stop that. Well, that. That's why you don't pay Dak in week two or three. Oh, my gosh. And, and the question now, now we've made our picks. But let's and, the, and I don't know how much more we can break down the game. What do you pay Dak? Because you've got to pay him something when the offseason gets here. I still think he's a, you know, $25, $30 million guy. Do you think there's any way that Jerry just says, I'm going to franchise you and we'll see what the next coach does? Yeah. That's 100% likely. If you franchise him, have you just signed the warrant that you're going to lose him? No, I don't think so. Man. Where would Dak Prescott make so much money off of endorsement deals right now? Like everybody wants to talk about, oh, you've got him and he's only making $2 million. I, th- I, and that, think, I think you can This make guy that money is making. Anywhere. Fifteen million dollars. Not anywhere. I think we disagree there. People, you, we live in a different world than we used to. You used to have to be in Dallas. Used to have to be in New York. Used to have to be in L.A. to make no, a I, lot of money. I off think that Dak has to. You, you think Dak Prescott goes to the Jets and goes uh, okay. six and ten? First thing first. If he goes to the Jets, he'll make three times the amount of money that he's making off endorsements because he's in New York. Absolutely I, I, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to disagree there, and you're just wrong, and that's fine. Um, if he went to Carolina, I still think he can make a ton of money because all these endorsements are for TV and nobody cares. I mean, you're not, you're not hawking, you know, I think, I think people care and insurance companies that are local anymore. No, you're agreed. hawking national stuff. I don't know, man. I, I think being the Dallas Cowboys quarterback doesn't mean uh, what it used to is a, di- no, it, it still means a lot. I, we disagree. That's that's fine, we but disagree. I'm telling you, it, they'll franchise him and they won't lose him because of that. Like I, I really think that. 
If I was him, I'd be pissed off I got franchised after playing for $200,000 for a couple of years. It depends on how you look at it. it. Depends on how the agent looks at it. It's like, well, you're playing for $200,000 your first year. Like he's making $2 million this year. Well, yeah, Or now, whatever it is. We're um, four years into but, this deal. But it, if he gets franchised, he's going to make $25 million. Yeah, but, or, or more, depending on how much it goes up. It's not going to go up that much more. It's so, The franchise tag way, is around $25 million. Either way, $25 million. And your endorsement stuff, I mean, he's making over $10 million a year. Oh, yeah. No, I'm, like, I'm not saying. But that's he's not going. Fine. I just don't think that's going away. Uh, you, if he leaves, just because he doesn't have a star on his helmet doesn't mean that money's gone. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. It is what it is. Let's uh, let's move on to the next one. Let's, uh, man, we spent fifteen minutes on that. Thing. Well, we didn't spend fifteen <laughs> minutes on that thing. No, 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 no. no. I, we I know what you're talking about. Fifteen minutes since the show has started. Talking. Yes. Uh, Texans at the Titans. Twelve p.m. on CBS. It's at Nissan Stadium in Nashville. This, this is game a, has playoff implications on it. A hundred percent. This is two eight and five teams. They both lead the AFC South. And this is the first of two matchups over the last three weeks of the season, which is crazy. Correct, sir. Um, I don't know what is going on with the Texans. Uh, I will tell you this, and I, I don't know the exact stats on it. If Will Fuller is not playing, the Texans will lose. If Will Fuller plays, the Texans will win. So I have not seen a report on it. I, I know, uh, well, here's one right here. He's questionable. So we'll see. I don't right. know that I agree with that at all. Uh, with Will Fuller in the lineup over the last two seasons, they have the number one passing offense in the NFL. That's with fine. that, without him in, they are lower twenties passing yeah. offense. I just okay. Why that one guy matters? I think that's a statistical anomaly. I can't explain it. Uh, they lose more regularly than not. I'm they they had this. him against the Pats. They have. They didn't have him against. It's just listen. Okay. They beat the Colts. They beat the Pats. After both of those wins, we both came on this show and was like, not sold. Still not sold. This is still not a good football team. Yeah. They are a flawed team. They're a fraudulent team. I don't know how they won those games, but they're not a team that anybody should really be afraid of. Winning cures everything. Winning also hides a lot of things. That's they, true. Yeah. They have flaws. And they're Who is winning. that, Lombardi? They're winning. Yes. And they're winning... They're winning games. I don't know how they're winning them, but they are not a great team. They're not anything to be feared. Will Fuller or not. That Pats game, Will Fuller played. He ain't the reason they won, okay? New England could not muster an offense to save their life until the very end of the game. Will right. Fuller had nothing to do with that. Here's here's what happened. So he's in his last four games okay. against the Falcons. On a terrible football team. October sixth, the they they scored fifty three points. He had fourteen receptions and two hundred seventeen yards in that one. Well, you score uh, fifty three points, you're gonna have a shitload of points at That's Kansas stats. City. They won thirty one to twenty four. Okay. They play at Indianapolis and they lose thirty to twenty three. He got hurt early. He only had one reception for six yards, so he got hurt early in that game and they so lost. So giving up thirty points has nothing to do with that. I'm with you. I agree. I mean, they gave up 24 to the Chiefs, and they gave up 32 to the Falcons. I'm, I'm with you. He comes back, and he's back for Indianapolis. And they beat Indianapolis 20 to 17. That is, yeah. The next week, they beat New England 28 to 22. That's right. And now, he's back out again. So I'm just, I'm just telling I, you, that I'm has, with you, that has nothing to do with it. It, it may not. But it, to me, it ties in together. Nothing to do with it. So, if, if he ain't playing, if Will Fuller ain't playing... I would take the Titans to win. If he ain't, if he is playing, I'm still taking the Titans to win. If he is playing, Titans are playing better football right now. I don't uh, know yeah, that they're, they're a better team. They are playing better football. They right are now. six and one with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, and he is lighting it up. Ryan Tannehill is ridiculous right now, and it it I don't know what it is. Like Arthur Smith looks like he is more comfortable with this quarterback, and it it seems like he all of a sudden figured out how to how to call plays. And it's not that he didn't know how to the first six weeks of the season. I think a lot has changed on this team. I don't know what they've done. It's a, uh, they're it's a they're running a, Derrick Henry. It's a hell of an like adjustment by the entire coaching staff. It's yes. taking a lot of pressure off the defense, so that makes the defense look so much better. Um, 
I mean, it's it's just been incredible. I think they're they're the hottest team in football, not named the Ravens right now. Oh, agreed. And and I think they're going to win this game, Will Fuller or not. I mean, they are they are just they're scoring points like it is going out of style right now. Yes, um, and that is not something we're used to with the Titans with the Titans at all. Like it, it took a little, because all right, so they lose to Denver sixteen to nothing. And then they make that swap over. They beat the Chargers 23-20. to They beat Tampa Bay 27-23. They lose to the Panthers 30-20. to And then, I mean, they've won four straight. Scored 35 on the Chiefs. Scored 42 on Jacksonville. Scored 31 on Indianapolis. Scored 42 at Oakland last week. Yeah, I was about to say, just scored now, 40 again. some of this has to do with, you know, they blocked field goals against the Colts. They, you know, but this offense every week has figured out ways to score points. That's right. And it is a welcome change. Yes. Like, this is the team that we thought we would get from Mike Vrabel. Like, they are tough. And they are still explosive. Like, it, it doesn't have to be one or the other. That's right. And it's a lot of fun to watch right now. No, it, it is a lot of fun. And I just think they're a better team from top to bottom. Outside of the quarterback position, I think they're a better team than the Houston Texans. Uh, even quarterback. I mean, Tannehill's uh, playing better than, than Watson right now. Okay, like right, I, just just right now, like I'm not, not saying gonna, all time. He's, like, he's not better than Watson, but they're winning and they're playing better complementary football. Yes, they're yes. the better team right now, and I'll and I will take Mike Vrabel as a head coach over Bill O'Brien. I don't know 100%. why. I just have not. Last year he rolled off like six, seven wins in a row, and just all of them were goofy. And I just i I don't know why I can't buy into this guy. And I, can't, I watched them beat my Patriots. I watched them beat the Colts, who I was super high on. And I left those games thinking, all right, they won those games. It's great. They're not a good football team. It's, I don't like this team. It's fraudulent. Yes, it's hiding something. Uh, I'm going to go Titans minus three here. Yeah, I'm Titans big. So, oh, you think big? Yeah, I think Titans big. That is interesting. That's a, I'd love to see the Titans team in the, in the playoffs. Uh, next up, Bills at the Steelers. Sunday night football, 7.20 p.m. on NBC. It's at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. Again, two wildcard teams looking at it. Uh, this is playoff implications at this point in the season. Um, Bills lost at home last week. They are 5-1 and one on the road, though. Uh, well, they lost at home to the Ravens. Yeah. They lost at home to Baltimore. Yeah, but they're but they're going on the road now. Um, I don't I don't know that it... It, the home road split didn't matter when. They, so they lost game. at home to the Pats. They lost at home to the Ravens. They lost it. Whatever. They lost to really good teams. I'm just throwing it up there. They're five and one on the road. That's good. Okay. I'm saying they play well on the road. Like, all right. And they they have thus far. Uh, the Steelers eight and five. They're five and two at home. Um, I don't know what to make of this. Uh, the Steelers like Duck looks good right now. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna call him MVP candidate or anything, but well, like, once again, he went to Arizona. Yeah, I know, I know. I, understand I mean, that the is a bad. That's a bad football team. That team was like three, three and one at one point in time, and then they just fell off a cliff. Yeah, they're they're a bad football team. They I, are I don't understand they how were at the beginning of the season. I don't know how the Steelers are winning. Well, they're playing bad teams. Well, have they beat a good team? That's a good question. Let me tell you. They beat Arizona. They beat Cleveland. They beat Cincy. They lost to Cleveland. They beat the Rams. They beat uh, the Colts. They beat the Dolphins. They beat the Chargers. The Rams are, I would call, a a good team. They lost in overtime to the Ravens. They beat the Bengals. They lost by four to the 49ers. They lost, and, and then, of course, the first two games of the year were what they were. Uh, Two-point loss to the Seahawks. And a beatdown at the hands of your Patriots. So yeah, I like they got a good win on there. Yeah, I just think we live in a world where there are three tiers of football teams. I mean, what, what about and the Bills a, though? The Bills are a good team. Yeah, but like, a, it, the, the, that's absolutely true. They're a good team. Yeah, but who, who have they beaten? Let's see. They Let's go down there. They lost to the Ravens. Do that. They beat the Cowboys. They beat the Broncos. They beat the Dolphins. They lost to Cleveland. They beat the Redskins. They lost to the Eagles. They beat the Dolphins. 
They beat Tennessee, which Tennessee's is, a good team. Yeah, but that was when Mariota was still playing. Uh, they lost to the Patriots. They beat the Bengals. They beat the Giants. They beat the Jets. Okay, so it's the same thing. Like they've got one win over a a good team. Yeah, you know. Okay, and then I gave the Steelers the Rams. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. You're not gonna give me the the win over Tennessee. That's just insane. That was that put Tennessee at two and four, and that's okay. the game that that got Ryan Tannehill the starting job the next week. All right, like Tennessee was awful at that point, but I'll give you that one if you want to. That's fine. I'm good with that, <laughs> but it's it's the same thing. You see okay. what I'm saying? Like they are both feasting on subpar but, competition. Right. They're beating the teams they're supposed to beat, so this should be a good yeah. game. This so should be a close game. It should be interesting. I would take a dog. I would whoever's getting points to start this game. I would take the Bills are getting. Two. Yep, I'll take those two then. Okay. I think the Bills can win this I'll, game. I'll take the Steelers. I, I like the Steelers at home. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, the injury report, James Conner's still out. Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster's still out. Uh, Jalen Samuels is out. Well, it, okay, all these guys are questionable. Vance McDonald, questionable. Uh, the only guy for Buffalo is uh, is an offensive tackle. Um, Ty Nasiki. I hope I said that right. I have no idea if it did. But either way. Uh, so we're we're gonna go opposites on here. You're gonna go with the Bills, and I'm gonna go with the Steelers. So that kind of makes sense. Kind of makes sense. So and I I do like this Bills team a lot, but maybe just not in this situation. We'll see. I'll, I'll take who I think is a good quarterback, not a great quarterback, against a good defense, against a guy that we haven't seen anything from. At all from against any against decent a defense. really good defense still that makes sense. That's I I think they're gonna make Duck look terrible. Let's talk about a massive matchup: the Bears at the Packers. It's twelve p.m. on Fox. It's from Lambeau, and that what is this the two hundredth meeting? Is that what did I hear that? That well, can't they've be been right. playing for a hundred years, and this is the second time they've played this year, and they play twice a year. Have they played twice a year, forever? I don't know. For hundred. I mean, that. they can't. It, but either way, I I thought that I read that somewhere. Like, I know they opened football up because it was the hundred year anniversary, and they've played this rivalry for a hundred years, and that's crazy. It wouldn't shock me if they played twice a year. Even back in the day when they didn't have many teams, they still played twice a year. Yeah. Uh, Bears are seven and six. The Packers are ten and three. Um, I These don't. These two know. teams are going in different directions, though. I mean, it could, do you say that? Yeah. I mean, the Bears have, have won a couple of games in a row, right? Yeah, I mean, Green Bay's won two in a row, though. Yeah, they just don't they just they, they looked at, God, like they just look bad. They look terrible uh, <laughs> getting beat up by the 49ers. But other than that, I mean, I mean they just struggled. They just struggled to beat the Redskins. The, the Skins. Yeah, but the Redskins have actually looked pretty decent here. And for then they, several they weeks. beat up on the Giants. Like, the Redskins have won, let's see. They lost last week, but they had won two in a row before that. Like, they beat Detroit and they beat Carolina. So, like, I don't think that that's such a, a terrible uh, a terrible win, I guess. And they did beat up on the Giants, but, yeah, the Bears, uh, they, they got the win over the Cowboys last week. They got a win over Detroit before that. They got a win over the Giants before that. So, you know, like we know what the Cowboys are turning into. I I I do think that the Bears are at least showing life, and that's yes. good. Their offense looks better. I mean, yeah. against the Rams, they scored seven points, okay? Then they scored 19 against the Giants. That's not good. Then 24, uh, 24 points and 31 points. Yeah. I mean, that's that's NFL numbers. Yeah. 24 is not embarrassing. No, not at all. And then you put up 31 on, on Dallas? On Dallas, That's yeah. pretty good. Dallas is supposed to have a good defense. Yeah. Dallas doesn't do anything good anymore. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I, I mean, it's going to be, I don't know, man. I don't know what to think. I th- I, I know what to think. Like, it, the the spread on this is uh, Green Bay minus, minus four, and, four and, a half. and a half. Yeah. Like, I'm going to roll with the Packers, especially at home here. Um, I just, now, I will say this. Like, over the years, it feels like the Bears have won more in Lambeau than they Yeah, home, <laughs> home field, I don't think, and, and I might be wrong on this. But I don't think home field has mattered a whole lot in this rivalry. And that, that kind of makes sense. I think these two teams know each other really well. They're not afraid to go into their own homes. They're basically the same place. 
They're both going to be cold. They're both going to have crazy wind the way they're positioned and set up in, in, in the areas that they live in. Yeah. Um, like I, the, the both play on natural grass and it's going to be messy, ugly, muddy. Um, so, you know, I wonder what the weather's going to be like. Like, could we get a snow game out of this? I mean, that'd be fantastic. Like, I, I, there's nothing better than than watching snow games between like the Packers and the Bears. Of course, of course, my Weather Channel app just completely like it decides it doesn't want to work. You. I got you. Let's see, where is it? Green Bay, Wisconsin. Sunday, I've got a partly sunny, high of fifteen, low of four. Ooh, all right, if nothing else. I got no precipitation, really. They've got a little bit of snow maybe Thursday. They got a little bit of snow maybe Saturday. Yeah, I'm seeing that now. So, cold front coming through, though. Saturday, it's a high 32, and then Sunday, it's a high 15. Nice. I will take that all day. If it can snow for me on Saturday night and just stick there, I would love to watch that. Make that feel just really sloppy. That would be wonderful. Wonderful. I love it. All right, I'm I'm rolling with the Packers minus four and a half. I think they went by a touchdown. I'll, t- I'll take the Bears in this. Okay, we can roll with that. It, mainly, I'm just hanging on to my Vikings division winner, and I need them to win a couple of div- lose a lose a couple of division games. That makes sense because if you don't lose a division game, you can't lose the division. That's that's true. That's see, it's kind of how math works. That is how math works. You're you right, right about right that. Right now, I don't think Green Bay has lost a division game. <laughs> so, no, I don't think so. I need no, them start, not yet. I need to start taking a couple of L's here. Let's uh let's move on. Last big game of the weekend. Uh, and then we've got four interesting games that we'll hit in our rapid fire. Uh, but the Broncos at the Chiefs, I think this registers as a big game right now. Man, this Broncos team, boy, they could have had Drew Locke to start the season. This would be a different Broncos team. At your your over seven would have hit. Still might. Ed, we we getting there. Still might. Twelve p.m. on CBS. It's at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The Broncos sitting at five and eight. The Chiefs are now nine and four after that win last week at uh, at Gillette against the Pats. So I will say this: this at least like seems like it might be good for the Broncos. The Chiefs are only three and three at home this season. They have been a lot better on the road than they have been at home, which is strange, right? Yeah, I, I just think well. No, no, of Mahomes, course, Mel Holmes was Mahomes out. Mahomes missed three of those games. Yeah, but I think they only lost one of them, right? Oh, damn, you might be right. Yeah, they lost the uh, the Colts game. No, they lost two of the Packers. They lost, I, was about so they say, lost, I thought they lost two of them. That's right, because Aaron Rodgers came in yeah. without Mahomes being there. That's right. That's right. That's it. Oh, yeah. but, that, but he was back for the Colts game. Back, so, yeah. either way. This game. Either way, they lost to the Colts at home. They lost to somebody else at home, and they lost to the Packers. Uh, but they're three and three at home. Not that that necessarily matters a whole lot. Um, this Broncos team, like they kind of figured some stuff out against the Chargers, and then last week that offense was just almost unstoppable for the first two and a third quarters. And once they got up thirty-eight to three, oh, it's over. They just kind of they. Wrapped everything back up in the playbook nobody, and put the playbook yeah, in the car and said, right. "All right, like, no, nobody get hurt, and let's let's ride this thing out." Yeah, we're now we're now fighting time, not the opponent. Yeah, um, and they did that well, by the way. Um, I think Vic Fangio, this is the team that he was wanting before the season started, and he just needed a trigger man that could run the offense. You just need a competent, capable offense, control the line of scrimmage, get Phil Lindsay going. Let him run the football, control the line of scrimmage, control the clock, keep the defense on the sidelines. The best defense you can play is no defense. Yeah. And uh and and when you're out there, let them rip and 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 let guys go. Defense is starting to tee off on folks. I I think look, shut Watson down is not an easy thing to do, and they did it for three quarters. Yeah. I don't know that they're going to shut Mahomes down, but Mahomes is not 100%. Got the hand. We don't know what's going on with that. We know he's going to play. Yeah. And they just came out of a fist fight with New England. Oh, yeah. Okay. That that was not an easy, fun game. I, I kind of like Denver here. Listen, I need Denver. Well, especially need Denver. with all those points, man. I need, oh, no, I definitely love Denver with the points. But but my overbet, my overbet, Denver seven games, 
I just need them to win two out of these last three. They got this one. And that, that'll Booger push Bear. for you. I got yeah. a Booger Bear in this one. But then I got the Lions and the Raiders. I, I think I got to push. And if I can get this game, I think I can cash it. Well, that'd be – Think I'd be so. You think they could they could win five straight to end the season? I don't know why they can't. They look really good. They look really good, and I think we're going to get to a point where this Lions team and this Raiders team packs an end. I think those teams are a. The Raiders is a divisional game, even if both teams are out of it, which they are going to be out of it. Yeah, I I think you still want to fight like hell to win that game. That's divisional game. You don't want to lose that game, and and that Lions team, man, I just they're a complete shell of themselves. Yeah. I think they're the better football team in both of those games. Now, that doesn't always mean anything. No, I mean, you're, you're right. You're right. They can get this one. But just just, all, just focus on this week. Go 1 0. Go 1 0 this week for me. I am taking the Broncos plus 10, but I'm going to take the Chiefs to win. I'm going to take the Broncos plus 10. Give me the upset. Give you the upset. Going it. straight up here. I need it. All right. Go with my boy right. Sam. That's, I'm all over that. All right, let's go through our rapid fire here. We'll uh, we'll close out with the uh, and my guy Tanner, with four others. He's a Bronco. Guy. Yeah, Tanner. There you go. He's a Bronco guy too. Monday night football is the Colts at the Saints. The Colts have nobody at wide receiver right now. No, I mean it's it's unbelievable. It's um, bad. I've been riding this damn team. I'm glad. I, I'm just glad I got a push last week. Thank you, Jameis, for throwing the pick six. Yeah, I knew I could count on that. So Colts at Saints. Um, obviously. Or rapid fire. We're not making picks on these, um, but man, I, I think the you Saints, couldn't put an all star team together between the Patriots and the Colts, best skill players, and put a competent team out there on the field. No, not right now. Not right now. I, I think the Saints get this easy. I do too. Uh, Drew Brees looked like a freaking all star last week against that forty nine. They got to be pissed off. They lost that game. Yeah, I lost it at home. Just. Ah. No, I'm with you. It's you laying, and you nine. got Monday Night Football at home yeah. against the Colts. Last yeah. team you beat in the Super Bowl, That's all right. that kind you're, of. You're laying, you're laying nine, you lay the nine. Lay hey, the interesting nine, fact. You Saints. you brought up that uh, the Super Bowl is in um, Miami. In Miami, they played the Colts in Miami. Well, they, they won't be playing the Colts if they make it to the Super Bowl this time. No, they definitely won't be doing that. That I will, I will assure you, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> I have been uh, right about a lot. I'm right about that. There you go. The Pats at the Bengals. I only bring up the Patriots and the Bengals because of the Spygate 2 or Spygate 3 situation, whatever it is. Um, Obviously, we talked about this a lot on the Gambling Pick Show, so we're not going to get into it here because we'll just be rehashing all sorts of stuff that you and TJ Reeves talked about. So go over to the Gambling Picks uh, Show and check that out. Of course, uh, listen to it on the podcast or on YouTube. Yeah, that's... at. I don't see any way. Patriots about a million. Yeah. I think they are so mad at, at the way that everything went last week with the Chiefs. Like, they are going to stomp the Bengals. I, 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 I said it about 100 times on Twitter and on Facebook, and anybody who would listen to me in a text message, mark my words. We will remember last Sunday as the day that we pissed Tom Brady and Bill Belichick off. Remember, remember the first week of December. Yeah. <laughs> That's 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 the day that those two finally got pissed off. Yeah, and they—I they, mean—you could see it on the field. It was, and they've got, and I, and I said at the end of the game, they were close. They were they were trying to score there. They would have tied the game. I said they might not win this game. They might not get that score. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Remember this day. Remember this game. The win doesn't matter here. They're gonna win out. They're gonna go six and zero, and then hoist Lombardi. And they're going to need a different ring sizer because it's not going on a finger. <laughs> Thursday night football is the Jets at the Ravens. <laughs> Man, I swear. I don't know why we talk any Patriots games on this show. Like, hey, you, you come up with some of the craziest ish. Uh, Thursday night football, Jets at the Ravens. Lamar Jackson got a quad issue. Why in the world would you play him in this game? I don't know. I understand you want to get the boy an MVP. I get oh, that. And he, he wants to be there for his teammates. I don't know that he's going to not get the MVP but if it's he a, set this out. Yeah, it's a short week. I understand it's at home, but it's against the Jets. Why would you risk him against the Jets? Like, if, if this is something that can heal up better 
in a week. Like, just give him the week off. Just take the week off. You can beat what the we Jets talk about with, with RG3. What, what we talk about with Mahomes. Yeah. And it wasn't the same injury. It wasn't. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. When you're a little bit gimpy, you're just going to always have that extra possibility of hurting something else. Yeah. What are we doing? You're not losing the MVP if you take a week off, so you don't get to back up a bunch of stats against the Jets. Okay. Nobody's going to hold that against you. We're already going to hand you the trophy. You're you're a clear – listen, I thought Russell Wilson was close with you. He's not. He's, He's just not. Not, not ever right? last week. I thought Watson was close with you. He's not. There's nobody in this game. It's just you alone. You and Joe Burrow, this is going to be the two, like, easiest runaway, runaway MVP Heisman conversation we've ever had in our life. Don't get hurt playing the stupid Jets. No. Don't do that. I love you. I don't want to see you do this. Should it, it say say he does play? Is fifteen points too much here? Yes, I think the spread is too much. Man, I don't know. He might sit back in the pocket and just pick people off, though. I mean, he's still got a hell of an arm. It it wouldn't surprise me if they say, "Okay, I'm gonna play, but I'm not running today." Here's, here's what I'm and worried he's just about: gonna snap the football from the shotgun, and he's just gonna sling it. Here, here's the the only reason why I'm worried about it. It's two words: Greg Williams. See, you're right. You got a gimpy quarterback you're right back there. You're right. And he may not be. And you got a, a dirty. Total. You got a dirty ass dude on the other side. I'm just saying, like it's it not. It, well, yeah. No, that's yeah, it. He's dirty. That's yeah. it. No, he's just dirty. And that's that's what everybody gets him hired ever everywhere. played for him. And then he doesn't coach them anymore. Is like, yeah, that guy's dirty as hell. Yeah, I'm glad he was on our side because he's dirty as hell. Yeah. I, I would sit Lamar out on this one. They know you're right. Like there is I'm, no way. I've been saying it. No way. But I'm always so much more. Con- I, I'm not trying to say I want to wrap my quarterbacks in bubble wrap. Yeah. But at some point in time, you don't need this game against the Jets. And you can even lose you're, this game. You're, but you're not going to lose this game. Yeah. Even if you did, you still got the tiebreaker over the Pats. I don't think you're losing this game. I don't think you are either. I just don't. I think you put RG3 out there. I you think can RG3 still win can this. run this offense. Will you beat him by 15? No. But you can win this but, game. But you cares? have the best kicker in football. He can get you in field goal range. Your defense can get you in field goal range. Your yeah. offensive line running the football can get you in field Seriously, goal range. Seriously, the Jets may not score double digits in this game. They're bad. They're bad. So, it, it Ravens, if you're watching, sit your boy John, out. John, sit him down. We're just trying to be real with you. We're trying to look out for your I future. Said, I said it the week that it was a Thursday night game. Yep, it was Mahomes. And I said, why sit him? And we were driving to Chicago, and you look up at your phone, and you say, oh, Mahomes is down. He's not getting up. Mahomes yeah. is down. He's in this bad. <laughs> and this is He's after bad. we recorded on Tuesday night, and you said they need to sit him and and just let him get right because. It, and it's not that you just, at some point in time, yes, you have to play hurt. This is not one of those times. No, it is show not. Uh, last one, Vikings at the Chargers. I bring this up because the Vikings are right there on the cusp. And we both had them winning the division. We both had them going to the Super Bowl this year. They are one game behind Green Bay. And they still have a game left with Green Bay. Yes. So that helps. That definitely helps. But they can't, they can't lose anymore. Cannot lose anymore. You need to win this. The, the Chargers got right last week. And I understand part of that has to do with how bad Jacksonville is right now. I wonder how much of that is a fraud. I mean, they scored 45 points. I must stand by my previous statement. Do you see the uh, the the footage of Phillip Rivers Phillip talking? Rivers to, talking yeah, yeah, talking yeah. talking smack. Yeah. He's like, 90-yard touchdown. He's like, yo, 17. Not in my ear. It's not in my ear, man. Like, you celebrate, but not in my ear. He's like, I'll celebrate anywhere I want. It's like... Yo, Phil. That is a that is a forty year old man, father of seven, talking to a twenty four year old, twenty eight year old guy. It's, it's like Phil, you need to you need to slow it down, bro. You need to slow it down, bro. There's bruh. ever been a dad in the NFL. It's not Tom who's the oldest. It is it is definitely Phil is is the dad of the NFL. A hundred percent. That dude, just every embarrassing thing a dad can do, he does. He. Yeah, that's putting it mildly. He does. That is putting it mildly. All right, that's going to wrap it up. In a what? Uh, in 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 a what? NFL Week that's Fifteen right. previews. 
Of course, you can find all of our picks, all of our gambling picks, etc., over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you go enter the Pick'em Contest. That, uh, if it's not already up by the time you watch this, it will be very shortly. I'm about halfway done with give, it right give, now. Give me a little bit. Give me just a little bit. I've only got NFL games this but week. But don't forget. So, you know. Uh, but don't forget, go enter the football pick'em contest. We got prizes coming from Tunica, Mississippi. You will enjoy it. And Tunica, Mississippi, of course, brings you the show every week. Go over and check them out, tunicatravel.com, all the amazing things they are doing down there. Also, smackapparel.com. Use promo code WIN. You get 20% off over there. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever it is, leave a five-star review and leave uh, or hit uh, hit the subscribe button. All those wonderful things. All right, I am rambling on, so we're going to get out of here. We will see you all again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.